It's called for the plug, and I just hopped off the porch with DGB. Plug! Scarfo the plug, man. Welcome to Off the Porch, man. Man, I appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, I appreciate you being here, man. How you feeling today? I'm all right, man. I'm in the zone. I'm in tune with my third eye. Moving yeah. cautious, hmm. moving wise, moving smart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trying to level up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There you go. They say uh, you make $275 a day, you get earn six, you're going to get six figures. So, yeah. I'm trying to just get to my quota. So that's your daily I'm trying goal. to double that. You know what I'm saying? My, yeah. my, my daily goal about, you know what I'm saying, 600 to 1000 every day. We hmm. can profit that, put that in the shoebox. Ain't nothing going to be wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's some big stacking right there if you can right. pull that off every day for mm -hmm. 365 you know? All right. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you being here right now. Um, I know you're currently in the halfway house right now. Right. Um, yeah. So for people who are unfamiliar, how does that work out? Well, the halfway, it's a transitional center, so... When you get a lot of people that's waiting on parole or get denied parole, if they charges aren't like that serious, you know what I'm saying? I only had a gun and weed charge, you know what I'm saying? Nothing violent. So, <coughs> excuse me. I was able to go to the halfway house and they, it's, they're supposed to be letting you work. Hmm. So, everything that you know, you're supposed to get a job. Yeah. And every guy, then have it off, you get paid, the checks go straight to the TC, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. I was able to finish with that, you know what I'm saying? I pulled my little strings. And I pay my, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never had no job still. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I pay hmm. my own check every two weeks and yeah. all that damn folks send it to the TC. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, God, they just stay low key. They don't know, you know, like right here, I'm supposed to, right now I'm supposed to be at work, but I'm with y'all. <laughs> <That's laughs> <like, yeah. laughs> so what times are you allowed to leave the halfway house? Uh, 11 in the morning to 11 at night. Okay, that's not so, too bad. Though. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? They give you like a 12, you work like a 12 hour shift, you know? Yeah. You gotta be back. Yeah. I get five days out, no, five days out every week, you know what I'm saying? So Tuesday through Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I got to stay in there. That's oh, okay. the worst day, though. Hmm. It's like getting locked up all over again. Yeah, yeah, they give you a little bit of freedom and then they throw you right back in there. Yeah, huh? man, that shit of mine thing. Yeah. So what have you been working on since you've been out? Um, I noticed on social media, you mentioned you haven't recorded since June. Yeah, I ain't record. Like, you can keep it up in two with me, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sex. I ain't recorded since June 25th. I be like to take a little break away from the studio and don't just be living in the studio. I like to actually like to live. I live a real life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was scarf for a friend. You know what I'm, I'm scarf for a second. I, I live a real life. You know what I'm saying? So hmm. I really be out here in these streets trying you know, to got there. So I be, you know what I'm saying? I, I gain some stories, gain something to tell y'all. I like to rap about real shit. So yeah. If I'm in the studio all day, y'all gonna hear the same hmm. repetitive words, repetitive. Recycled bars, you know what I'm saying? I don't want yeah. to give my fans that, so I like to give y'all true life stuff. So I be taking a little break. So a little sixty day hiatus. It's a time place for everything. They got okay. a time for harvesting. They got a time for growing. They got a time, you know what I'm saying, for yeah. selling the product. It's a time for everything. So I be taking my little time off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I but I know it. once I really blow up, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to be in that, be in that motherfucker every single day. I heard Future say he do twenty songs a day. And you can tell how far, how far ahead he is from everybody else, you know what I'm saying, other than Drake. Future's like, everybody yeah. else is here, Future's up there, so hmm. yeah, I'm trying to get to that level. Yeah. How much more time do you have left in the uh, halfway house right now? Got 19 days in the motherfucking wake up. 19 days. <laughs> and pack almost, it up. The, almost that time for you to be fully free, huh? I'm not going to do the fans, pack it up. <laughs> but I, I can't wait. I'm hoping they give me a clemency now, just... Cause they could do it, they could immediately release you. They could have an immediate release and got then just release you anywhere between 30 days. They could just mm. come and tell you any morning. They could just come tell me, go, I want every day. Huh. I don't want to spend no day in that motherfucker. They come tomorrow <laughs> morning, I'm ready. <laughs> I feel that, man. And, and when you get done with the halfway house, are you going to have any probation left? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have uh, two years left, but two you know years? in a year. Hmm. I can get it terminated if I do all the stipulations, you know what I'm okay. saying? Don't, don't feel no drug test, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be done smoking very soon. <laughs> get so it in while you can yeah, right now, you know? Yeah, I got to get it in while I can until I get an actual probation <laughs> officer, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to be the last blunt to so miss this for about a year. Hmm. It's going to be a rough year, gonna huh? be a, Not going to be able to focus, though. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm going to save the money. You don't smoke it, you ain't, you got down, get all the money, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stop smoking, I can make all the money, I'm going to make all the profit. Yeah. Because uh, when you were in jail, were you smoking at all in there? 
Yeah. Yeah. My okay. girl attempted that. Every goddamn day, I, was, I need a $50 cash out. <laughs> yeah. Ain't too much else to and do I'm inside there. And I'm that shit. that shit right now. I got his vote. <laughs> they think talking about $50 for a little blood, like a point five. Imagine paying $50 for a point five. Yeah, That's thought, really how it is down there, bro. Yeah. Three five cost $200. Yeah. I believe that though. Like fifty cc costs two hundred dollars. Yeah, it's not you, easy you get to get it in there. You know, a ten cc is like the size of your fingernail. Yeah, that is twenty five dollars. Sure, you get three sticks out of that. Yeah, three little 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 little, little joints. It'd be skinny as hell. Hmm. But imagine that. Imagine how much this is like a goddamn one five or whatever. Other ones. Imagine got there smoking a little fingernail of weed. You know what I'm saying? Being high as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your tolerance is so low. Smoking, exactly, bro. You yeah, had no weed. You smoking a little fingernail worth of weed. You high as hell, bro. Y'all <laughs> niggas in there rolling, laughing, rapping, doing all types of shit. Geek the officers walking by, they know you high as hell laughing. At. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit not fun, though. No. Nah. That shit still ain't fun. Nah. You laughing at the crowd, because God damn, that shit hell, too. Yeah. No, nobody deserved to be in no cage. Nah, nah, for real. Just does help to make the time go by a little. Yeah, easier. facts. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta find happiness, whatever you got. Cause some niggas that's not coming home and they gotta mm. get down. You know what I'm saying? That's they. That's they. They feel like they. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you get what I'm trying to say though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you plan to move to DC when you're finally done, right? I tweeted that. I will. I'm, I want to get a spot in DC. Definitely get a little condo a spot in DC because mm. they show me a lot of love. So okay. Shout out to DC, man. Y'all show me a lot of love. Yeah. Believe it or not, bro. These, keep it real fast, bro. DC is neck and neck with Atlanta, bro. Mm. As far as listeners, mm. that, shit, that shit is crazy to me because I'm here in Atlanta. Every yeah. Day, so that, you know what I'm saying? So I really, I really appreciate that shit that y'all rock with me like that. So I feel like. Y'all gonna be, y'all gonna be my, my second home, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I met some genuine relationships with niggas from DC. You know, some JG Riff. I got some with Q the Fool. I got some with Google oh, okay. Red Dude. I know that those are two different sides, but you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you probably had pick- tone, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. That's a real nigga. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I might go up there, but really, I'm staying in. I'm staying. In oh, okay. Atlanta. I'm staying in Atlanta. I, got you. I, got <laughs> I ain't you. gonna leave. This, I ain't gonna leave All the right. house. All right, let's take it back uh, to the beginning of your story. Um, you were born in New York and then moved to New Orleans, right? Yeah. How old were you when you moved to New Orleans? I was like, it had, we moved right, right after Katrina. That was 2005. I was like eight. Oh, okay. So still yeah. pretty young. Yeah, I was young. Like, yeah. I was like, you know what I'm saying, like. Uh, like third grades and shit yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? I was young. So I stayed there all the way up until I did my ninth grade. Yeah, it's You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Salmon High. Then I came out and then I went to MLK. Oh, okay. I, there. I met Guac Tarantino. I know Guac Tarantino too from goddamn MLK. We went to school together. Oh, yeah? Shit. Hey, huh. yeah, shout out Big Guac. We do anything. Yeah, Guac's going up right now. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, what was it like growing up in New Orleans? I mean, shit. Nigga really young, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit hard, you're struggling. You know, it's a struggle. Yeah. Anybody, everybody got a struggle. You know what I'm saying? That was right after Katrina? Yeah, that was right after Katrina. My pops okay. went to help down to go rebuild. That oh, shit was okay. a gold mine. Mm-hmm. You got down, go do demo, got down, rewire, mm-hmm. all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and the, you know what I'm saying? And nigga got to work. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a goddamn gold mine. So, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people from everywhere mm-hmm. trying to redo it, trying to do construction and shit. And everybody smoke drill, you all that shit. Bro. Yeah. My fault was on that shit. Yeah. And when you moved to Atlanta, how did that compare to New Orleans? Shit, I fell in love with Atlanta, man. Really? <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> what was it about Atlanta that made you fall in love I mean, with I mean, you know what I'm saying? I miss the genuine people out here. My nigga Baby Joe Rich. My nigga Gucci passed away. You know what I'm saying? But I just, you know what I'm saying? I would, there were a lot. I started meeting family when I was old enough to get down. You know what I'm saying? They start fucking hoes and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ninth, ten, you know, eighth, ninth grade, shit like that. Yeah, that's why I was Atlanta. You know, I was here, so hmm. that would make me fall in love. And then I hopped in the streets, hmm. and that's why I really hopped off the porch when I jumped off the porch. Like, you're like <laughs> dirty blow, you do. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask how old were you when you jumped off the porch? I mean, I was like ninth grade. Okay. Soon as I got, to, soon as I got to get. Soon as you got to Atlanta. Soon as I got to Atlanta, <laughs> and I really, and I went to high school. I met my nigga Taiwan. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I had got down, finesse, made some money real quick. Got down and he uh, he took me to the spot and I bought a three five. I started from a three five. Then I was just selling selling weed and food. I was selling and I was the blunt all the way out. You know what I'm huh. saying? Seven, bought a seven. I really all the way. I went all the way. I took every step from the beginning 
You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody front me no major, ain't nobody front me no major shit. Hmm. God damn, but then once I got, when my mama caught me selling weed, you know what I'm saying? I was at the, I was at the shell, right down up the street from the crib, on from the road. I was okay. front drive, I call it track nose. You hmm. know what I'm saying? I was at the shell. I was up there standing in front of the door. I'm gonna pull it right up. She like, oh, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> she, already she already knew. Already knew she knew. Doing, right there, bro, when I got back to the crib, she didn't even embarrass me though. She, you know, because there's other people out there. She didn't even embarrass me though. She didn't even want to embarrass me. Trying to like, got this bad. Because I was a young man. I was still 14. I'm still 14. Child. Oh, I'm wow. a goddamn child. My mama would have whooped my butt right there she on the spot. I swear to God, she didn't embarrass me in front of nobody. Goddamn. When I got back to the house, she was mad at hell that she told me if I'm going to do it, I got to do that shit correctly. Her, her and my pops. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, they were mad. Don't get me wrong, but they told me if I'm going to do it, I got to do that shit correct. Hmm. And then I was, she was still mad. She made me, you know what I'm saying, try to make me, don't be, leave that shit, have that shit in her house. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Did you have any guidance in the streets? Was anyone? Yeah, that's on yeah. that droop. My pops, okay. my mama, my mom used to be in the streets. My okay. grandfather, Roger Ray, you dig know what I'm saying? He used to get there wrong with Nicky Barnes, all the niggas, the mafia, all that shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He passed away from a heart attack. I mean, mm-hmm. from a, yeah, heart attack. But goddamn, he was... He was, so, you know what I'm saying, that shit in my, in my blood. Like, my mom, my uncle, my pop, everybody used to get down was, I was raised by hustlers. So yeah. it, was just, it just came naturally. Mm-hmm. I got you. Um, you're a self-proclaimed trapper of the year. <laughs> so let me ask you, how does one become trapper of the year? I mean, that shit just like stand out. That shit just like an MVP campaign. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I put my MVP campaign together, nigga. I'm doing it to the day. I'm doing this. I'm pulling up in this. I'm doing that. I just smashed that. Whole, you know what I'm saying? I was trying for the edge. <laughs> Look what I just did for you, goddamn. I just dropped the mixtape in front of the goddamn halfway house and yeah. did half a million streams. Huh. Yeah, you dig <laughs> what I'm saying? I was trying for the year, bro. I was talking that real trap shit, bro. Ain't nobody speaking that shit no more. Hmm. Like, I mean, Pee Wee. Pee Wee started talking that shit. Yeah. But ain't nobody else talking that shit. Scooter, the scooter only only drop once a year now. Hmm. So yeah. who, somebody got to got down to come and got them fulfilled on the Because there ain't no guidance in the street for my generation as far as traffic. Don't nobody mm-hmm. even know what they doing. Yeah. These niggas just buying weed and just saying they know how to sell weed. These niggas don't know how to sell weed, but it's a way, it's a formula to do that shit. Mm-hmm. Ain't no what niggas become successful for a reason. Yeah. That's why a lot of niggas be crashing out because they don't know what they doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's real. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, what's one of the biggest lessons you learned in the streets? One of the biggest lessons I learned in the streets, number one lesson, don't bring nobody where you stay at. Hmm. That's the biggest lesson, because if you really is making money, you make a move, that shit, you you are definitely a target. So that's no one rule. That's a lot of niggas fuck up at too, man. You bring niggas where they sleep at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so when did you start making music? How old were you? Uh, I was like... At 18, that's when I started taking it serious. I okay. really going to the studio. Yeah. That was, what, about four years ago? Yeah, about four years ago. Okay. Okay. But that's, but hold on. I dropped my first song, though, with NBA, though. That was 2000, that was 2016, October. Okay. So that was, like, three, three years, years ago. ago. Yeah, that was, okay. yeah, facts. No, that's when I dropped my first song at Scarfo the Pub. Yeah. All right, so how'd you get the name Scarfo? Man, it, I got it off a of little Nicky Scarfo. I named okay. myself like a little Nicky Scarfo, you know what I'm saying? Tiny Mob Boss. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a little nigga. Yeah. But nobody got down looked down on him. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? He was like he one of the youngest bosses and he did what he wanted to do. And yeah. that's how I feel like I'm doing, man. I'm coming in, I'm kicking the door open for me and mine. Mm. We're gonna do what we wanna do. Yeah. And nobody gonna tell us shit. Yeah. And uh you were doing great numbers right off the bat in 2016, 2017. Hey, yeah. Wow, were you surprised at all about that? That so many people were fucking with your music right away? No, bro, because I'm known in the street. So <laughs> then niggas was like, hey, bro, so you know Scarfo, we got there. You seen Scarfo video, you know what I'm saying? So then niggas we got there fucking because they know that shit for real. Yeah. So it actually just organically, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We ain't even really had to try. When it's for you, it's for you. You dig know what I'm saying? If I would have been able to stay out of jail, I would have got down. I would have been, you know what I'm saying? I'll be a household name at, at this point, but losses are the lessons. So we ain't going to get there and cry with spilled milk. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to ask her. Uh, I was gonna say in 2017, um, in October, you caught that charge where you got sentenced for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you prepared for that mentally? I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> nah, for real, because really I wasn't, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Just to be honest, which I wasn't prepared for that shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Because everything was going smooth, and I got get caught on the humble. You dig know what I'm saying? So that shit happened, and they denied me bonds. So I was in a country at town. Oh wow! Uh-huh. <laughs> so they denied me bonds because of my record. You know what I'm saying? I was on probation already, hmm. and that just and they when I when I couldn't get out. You know what I'm saying? Usually you can always get out on bond. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I got the best lawyer in that county. I still could not get out on bond. That shit was hmm. blowing my mind. <laughs> so I wasn't prepared for that shit mentally, but I had to get down and take that. Sh- you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to take that shit. shit. You know, like you can do it out of your control. Yeah. Did so you we, did you write any raps while you were locked up? Yeah, I did a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I did, but um, I wasn't really trying to be niggas entertainment. You dig what I'm saying? Like I would nigga be like, "Hey, bro, rap for me, got that?" He spit that shit, so I, I wasn't trying to be yeah. on that shit because <laughs> they already know I rap, so they always <laughs> be trying to get them. So I wrote, but I was really got them working on my working on my mind. Got them growing up. Yeah. For real, for real, crossing yeah. over into. The, Man, got down mentally. Yeah, because you're being on some young dumb shit. That's when I got down because I thought I'd consider myself. I mean, I did so much in this shit. I consider myself. An OG. I want to consider myself as a young OG. Yeah. Because I done did a lot of shit and I done got down. I feel like I've succeeded in the streets. I got a good name. I got a good reputation. You know what I'm saying? Especially on my side of town in my own, in my city. I feel like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shit, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> really. And were you able to keep up with what was going on in the rap game while you were locked up? Uh, I mean, I really didn't too much care. You talking about as far as like drama and goddamn gossip and all that? Yeah, just or even just music period. Yeah, I mean, I heard the shit because they had the kiosk and we had the tablets and then you okay. know what I'm saying, nigga had a phone on there and shit, so I was okay. able to stay on Instagram and shit. But yeah, I didn't really too much. You know what I'm saying? I would really, I would focus on some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to run up a set. Yeah. Even while I was behind the wall, I was trying to goddamn make some push some pawns. Yeah. Mhm. And this past January, they um they released you to the halfway house. Yeah. Um, how long after that did it take you to get into the studio? Uh, about 60 days. As soon as I was able okay. to go through it, you got to go through a goddamn like initiation process, 30 days, this, 30 days doing that, and then they'll okay. let you out the door, you know what I'm saying? They'll just let you straight out the door yeah. so you get there. And niggas be coming in there, niggas be on ice, niggas be on goddamn still shooting up. They be having all that shit in the, in the you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whatever, goddamn, the nigga be tripping that. Yeah. And when you did get into the studio, were you rusty at all? Hell no, nah, that shit came naturally. Really? Huh? Hell yeah, yeah, facts. That shit really did come naturally. Shit, that's when I made, that was the first time I made Make It Count. Oh yeah? Huh. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's why that shit, that shit got there. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get that shit out. Yeah. Have you switched up your flow or content since you've been back at? I feel like I elevated the flow, you know what I'm saying? I made it more recitable. You know what I'm saying? You can hear more what I'm saying because I'm not rapping so much fast over my words, mm-hmm. if, if that makes sense. So I just slow, you know what I'm saying? Slow it down so you can hear it because I really got a message and I feel like people weren't hearing me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So now, now I feel like people hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. They're respecting that shit. Yeah. So I like where we going with it. Yeah. Um, were you worried at all that people wouldn't fuck with you because um, it had been two years? No, nah, man. No. Nah. No, no, no. I had a goddamn. I, had a, I felt like I had a good name, you know what I'm saying? I felt like people were waiting for that shit. Yeah. I was always still getting my, I was still getting traffic to my page and shit. Yeah. And then I just knew once I got out, I was like, man, good music. You can't deny good music. We're mm-hmm. going to go stick to the same format. They didn't know me from before, as far as the, the world, but you know what I'm saying? My hood didn't know me, so I went back to hood. That's why I named, that's why I named it Take Trap Nola. I went back to where I started. I know my hood going to fuck with me. Hmm. If anything, you know what I'm saying? I'm good in the hood. You know what I, mean? like that. I got a good name on my side of town, so I know the hood gonna fuck. That's why I mean, that shit trapped over. So I know they gonna push it. They they alone gonna push it. Yeah. It's gonna go out. It's gonna go to Atlanta. The Atlanta gonna push it. And they got down. Shout out DC again. DC <laughs> got them fuck with me. And we only had a half a million streams, and we only 30 days in. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's good. I'm completely independent. Everything out my pocket, out these two. Hmm. Out these four pockets. Yeah. <laughs> that little baby. Yeah, speaking of that project, uh, Trap Noil, um, how long did you work on that project? I mean, I took my time with it only because of the restrictions, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I didn't want to get put out no bullshit. I definitely wanted to put out a good product first coming out. I wanted to be like I never left, you know what I'm saying? I don't <laughs> want no excuses, no, oh, he just in the house, you know what I'm saying? I wanted that shit to be a, a, a legitimate project. So I took my time with it. So that took me from April all the way up until September 1st when I dropped it. Okay. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? But I put out a lot of singles in between mm-hmm. and that didn't go on the project. I just I put out a lot of content to get my buzz back and now I yeah. feel like we we back where we should be. Well not we're not where we should be, like, we back where we need to be at. Hmm. And this next project this next project gonna goddamn 
put us where we want to be at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who are uh, some of the producers you worked with on the, uh, worked with on this project? Um, Ready Rock, you know what I'm saying? Cake Boy, Va- Cake Boy Valley. Hmm. Um, who else I work with? It? I love money. Okay. Old beats, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people that just that I'm, that I'm working with that that's not they not too too you know what I'm saying main, but we got them we in house and we got them we making a good sound you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We got a good track sound. Yeah. Did you have a personal favorite song on that project? Vegan. Yeah. Why that one? It just be go crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get I get right. <coughs> Excuse me. I get right to it. Yeah. They, you know what I'm saying from the beginning, vegan. Uh, I, I love Way Out because I, I like the message on Way Out mm-hmm. and Make It Count and Sideways. Sideways is going to get you $100,000, I'm trying uh. to tell you. <laughs> Sideways is going to get you six figures. The whole take, though, the whole take, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's something to get money to. It's a get money take. I make get money music. That's what yeah. I make. Yeah. We're going to talk chicken. And uh, you're working on your next project, uh, Eviction Notice 3. Yeah, Eviction Notice 3. Or it might be Chuck Jesus. I don't know yet. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I like to hear how the, how the music start to sound. And that's mm. how I picked the name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. However the music sound, if it shit sound godly, we're going to name that shit Chuck <laughs> Jesus. That shit sound like Bando music, we're going to name it Eviction Notice 3. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, you got Pee Wee Longway uh, featured on the next project, right? Yeah, we got, um, yeah, I got a, I got a couple of Longway coming. Hmm. And I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna, we're gonna definitely make sure make one of them make the project. I don't know exactly which one, but we're gonna make okay. sure. We might, make, we might do more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're gonna lock in. You know what I'm saying? This project, you know what I'm saying? We got, we got 90 days. Hmm. It's always a 90 day countdown. We got 90 days to get there. So we gonna see what we make. You know, what I'm anything can happen in 90 days. Yeah. So you but, plan on dropping this one uh, this year before this year is out? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, okay. I'm definitely get one to y'all before the year out. Okay. Free. I gotta get one to y'all free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go get some LA vibes, go get some New York <laughs> vibes, you know what I'm saying? Go get some Miami vibes. Yeah. And we're gonna got dang we're gonna put we're gonna put another classic together. Yeah. Nineteen days you'll be able to start getting out there and catching yeah, the vibes. Facts, facts, <laughs> facts, facts. Everything gonna be one hundred. All right. All right, Scarfo, what else you got working on right now, man? Uh right now we are getting this UPS merged together, United Plug Services. Okay. We're getting the hoodies coming for the fall, you know what I'm saying? And we got there, we're about to get back in the studio, we're about to lock in, we're about hmm. to focus. You know what I'm saying? We're finna build. Yeah. Ain't nothing too major, man. We're gonna keep working, build the brand. We're trying to build an empire. Rome wasn't built in one night, you know that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else you wanna add? No, man. Y'all can follow me at Scarf for the Plug, man. Go stream that trap nola everywhere. Watch them videos, subscribe to my YouTube, Scarf for the Pub. Growing up the shoe, I was the bank account. I put 50 away every day. My mama taught me how to say. I was in the heat, why I was in the shame.